hey, um, I just want to say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, I, I wanted to say Happy Father's Day. It means so much to be a dad. Um, and uh, one of the main reasons why I, I'm doing this channel is actually because of my dad. Um, faith and coffee bean. So if you like this channel and uh, you're a Christian, you're looking for some encouragement, uh, but then you also are a coffee geek like me, <laughs> this is the right place for you. Um, I, I wanted to go ahead and share one of the most important scriptures to my heart. Uh, I haven't done one of these videos pretty much on this channel like I've been planning, so I figured today, Father's Day, today's the day to jump in there and do it, uh, to honor my dad, because he's kind of the inspiration for a lot of this, and inspiration for uh, my Christian walk. So uh, I want to jump into a scripture that was not only his life scripture, but my life scripture. And I actually think is one of the most important scriptures when it comes to fathers and sons, fathers and daughters, um, when it comes to being a man who leads um, a godly household, when it comes to even being a mom uh, who, who leads a household, um, who, if you have children, if you have folks in your life that, that look to you, if you're an older person, if you're an aunt or uncle, and you want to be a good, godly example, I think this this particular chapter in the Bible is one of my absolute favorites for that. So let me get right into it. It's actually going to be Proverbs chapter 3. And if you know me, it is a scripture that I've talked about a lot uh, <laughs> through the years. But I, I definitely want to read a little bit of it today and then talk about it, okay? My son, do not forget my law. But let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and peace, they will add to you. Let no mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around them your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Here's the important part. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be healthy to your flesh and straight to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and your first fruits to all your increase, so your brains will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with wine. My son, do not despise the chastising of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profit or silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all things you may desire cannot compare with her. Her, guys. Her. <laughs> That's awesome. I always share that with my wife. And I stop right there. Length of days is your, in your right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life into those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. I'm just going to stop right there. feels like a good spot. Um, in life, one of the most important things my dad ever taught me was Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. A lot of times in life, um, we, want, we are our biggest obstacles. I know in my life, I have been my absolute biggest problem y'all i get in my head i start thinking things i start uh worrying about stuff i i over plan i'll overthink the future or the worst case of thing where i get in my head is i'm complacent and i forget how important certain things are and i get so stuck in the minutia of everyday life that that is one of the biggest problems with us as christians we could get stuck in, hmm, I need some coffee today before work. Uh, should I go to Starbucks? Should I make it? Do I have time to make it on my own espresso machine? 
<laughs> uh, you get stuck with, with things about work. Uh, in my day job, I am a department head of an insurance company. So I have so much stuff. I have projects that are going on in the future. I have new employees coming in. Uh, I have little daily stuff and I can get so stuck in that junk. Not, not to say that's not important in my career and life and what I do, but I can get so stuck in that that I forget to spend my time with the Lord. And y'all, I'm guilty of that. Uh, I think a lot of us are guilty of that. Uh, my dad, I'm gonna share a little bit of, of my testimony with, with my dad. Um, I think there's another video where I've shared a little more detail, but just kind of, I just tell you, um, my, my father was a person who struggled with, with substance abuse. Um, he was, I mean to say it, he was a drug dealer. Um, he went to prison, he committed armed robbery, uh, and if he was alive, he would tell you this right now, so I don't feel guilty about this. Uh, my family was very involved in some, a little bit of, uh, well, my father, I should say, <laughs> was involved with some, some criminal elements, let's put it that way. Uh, my, my dad was in prison for a while. Uh, I remember, um, I was in the car when he first, when the cops seized him. And uh, rather than going to protective services, my, my grandmother was allowed to come pick me up. I remember that experience being very hardcore and really something that stuck with me for the rest of my life. I remember visiting my dad in jail. Uh, that's not a good memory to have, you know, uh, when with a kid. And I remember the day my dad got out of his long stint in jail. And I, I'll never ever forget the moments. Uh, my dad pulls me aside and he's like, son, I wanna tell you about someone. And I remember thinking to myself, who's this person my dad's talking about? Uh, I grew up Catholic. Uh, my family's all Catholic, you know, and if you're Catholic, awesome. Uh, if you grew up in a Catholic family like me, awesome. Um, but in basically my dad says to me, son, I met this guy in prison and he changed my life. His name is Jesus. And my dad became one of the most on fire Christian people I've ever met. Uh, my dad told me the first thing he actually shared with me was Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. He said, son, you, sometimes you, you can't trust what's in your head. You can't trust your own heart. So you need to put your trust in Jesus. We're all sinners. We all have sin. And he explained what sin was and told me that I needed to ask Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. And that God was going to save me. You know, little did I know my life changed in that moment. There was a seed that sparked inside me that changed my life, changed the trajectory in my life, uh, changed everything I was supposed to be into who I am today. I know that. I know in that moment, that was that moment where I truly uh, was just a little kid, but accepted the Lord and it just changed the DNA of who I am. Now, I hope that you have someone in your life that you can do that with. Uh, I hope that you're a father. I hope that you're a mother. I hope that you're a mentor. I hope that you're a friend. If, if you don't have a child as a mentor, a friend, of the, that you could talk to someone and, and get them on fire for Jesus. You could change their life. And that's what happened. My dad's life was changed. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the details now. And maybe one day I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but just long story short, my, my dad took me on a lot of ministry things, and uh, I worked with uh, with him in the community, and I worked with homeless folks, and I worked with uh, drug rehabilitation programs. Our church was all folks that were uh, <laughs> saved from prison when I was growing up, and so I would hear stories of people who had drug addictions or worked for uh, criminal elements and gave their life to the Lord. Uh, and that was one weekend when I was with my dad, my parents were divorced. And the other weekend I was with my mom, uh, at a very, uh, conservative Nazarene church. So, uh, my, my dad was the Holy Roller Church, uh, with the ex-cons. My mom was the very conservative uh, doctors and lawyers church. <laughs> so very weird juxtaposition, very weird way to grow up. Uh, but the reason why I'm just sharing that with you is that my dad laid that foundation. And I really hope that you lay that foundation with someone in your life. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. One of the most important things we can teach our children or teach the people we mentor 
is that it's all about knowledge. And I always, I always get that point where I read this with my wife and says, you know, it's funny, knowledge is her. And there's a reason why that's put to that gender. Uh, I met my wife and my wife is one of the, not one of, she's the most brilliant, smart person I've ever met in my life. Uh, there's not a day that she doesn't impress me. She's witty, she's smart. She's one of those people that when, uh, they say everything at the right moment, at the right time, and they'll say something to someone and I'm like, I wish I would have said that. Uh, my wife's a writer uh, and she's a, just, just a great person. Um, but the most important thing is that you teach your kids trust in the Lord with all their heart, and secondly, to obtain wisdom. Uh, and, and wisdom, uh, you know, for me, I, I picked my wife. Uh, she's my wisdom. You know, uh, I, I educated myself uh, on a daily basis. I tell my son all the time, life isn't about degrees. Life is about the knowledge you have in your heart. Even if you don't have a degree, um, my father-in-law, was a person who uh, served the military two times. And when he retired, he went to college to learn about history. Uh, my, my grandfather, I don't believe ever had a college career, but I remember him being just a very smart person. And uh, my dad was the same way, you know, that just because you don't uh, have that college degree or just because you are in one field doesn't mean you can't learn about another. Anyway. I hope you all have a happy Father's Day. I hope that uh, if you are a father, you share that with your, uh, your children. Just trust in the Lord. It's the most important thing. My dad taught that to me at a very early age and it changed the rest of my life. And I appreciate that. I, I lost my dad um, because of his drug use. Uh, I lost my dad about, uh, what was it now? 13 years ago. Uh, I was in my... 20s, my late 20s, I was 28 years old. My dad passed. Uh, just because someone gets clean doesn't mean that the the, the effects of what they do uh, doesn't linger with their body. And because he was such a drug user for so long, um, it, it led to some health problems later on. And he went to the Lord very early. And the other day, uh, I was telling my wife this, uh, my son, who's 16, uh, really had made a big commitment and did a baptism, uh, and he, we always wanted him to make his own decision when he would get baptized. And it was just so cool after my son's baptism, uh, just sitting there praying with him, with him on one side, my wife on the other, and I couldn't help but to just think about my dad smiling down from heaven. And y'all, you know, if you've lost someone that you love uh, early, or if you've lost someone you love, period, um, the biggest gift we can give someone is by, again, sharing it with that next generation and that was a cool thing so y'all i hope you have a happy father's day uh tell my fathers out there again one last time happy father's day and continue just to share that joy and love